Hello children, today we are going to start our new unit. The name of our unit is What Should I Do? And the first activity that we are going to do, it's a reading comprehension activity that is called Web Doctor, Topic Stressed About Studies. And here we are going to read about uh, how teenagers are stressed with schoolwork, okay, and how to deal with these feelings, okay? Now, this is like a question for doctors and they are giving us some advices to follow to avoid stress okay so now we are going to take a look at this text and we are going to listen to this article we have to pay attention here that all these recommendations are very useful nowadays because we are uh, living in a world full of stress, okay, because we are locked in our houses, maybe we don't have the opportunity to go out and do exercises and those things, but here maybe you will find some uh, pieces of advice that would be very useful for you. Okay, so now we are going to listen and read. Unit, Unit 3, three page, page 30, 30. Exercise, exercise 1, Web Doctor, Web doctor. Topic. Topic, Stressed About Studies. Here at Web Doctor, we get a lot of messages from high school students asking for advice about stress. Many of you have told us that you find it difficult to study because you feel anxious and tired. You aren't alone. Everyone finds studying stressful from time to time, even doctors. If we had tests this year, we'd be nervous too. Luckily, there are many things you can do to help with the problem. I'm feeling stressed. What should I do? One, this is my most important tip. Look after yourself. Stress can cause headaches and other problems. Please don't ignore any symptoms like these. You should go to the doctor and ask for advice. Two, the average teenager should sleep for 8 to 10 hours a night. Do you? Perhaps if you rested more, you'd have more energy. Studies show that students who sleep well actually get better grades. To fall asleep more quickly, you should go to bed before midnight. And you shouldn't use your cell phone or read in bed. 3. You should make a schedule to manage your time. Take a break of 10 minutes every hour and make time for fun, too. You shouldn't work all day. Your goal should be study well, not study lots. Four, you shouldn't spend too much time sitting still. Get up and walk around to avoid backache and exercise for at least 30 minutes four times a week. Exercise helps your brain to stay fit, too. Try walking to school or going for a walk during your lunch break. 5. You already know you should eat healthily. But an occasional treat can be good for you, too. Dark chocolate contains chemicals which can improve mood and concentration. But you shouldn't have too much chocolate. You wouldn't feel happier if you ate a whole family-sized bar. You'd just have a stomach ache. 6. What would you do if you didn't have tests? Don't forget what makes you happy. Family, friends, and hobbies are important, too. Do one thing you love every day and try to relax. I'm sure you're a great student. Believe in yourself. And good luck. Okay, so here we have at the end uh, uh, five important words that we can consider. Okay, maybe you don't know them. We have the words stress, symptom, treat, chemical, and mood. Okay, so look for the meaning of these words, okay, to help you understand better. And here we have an activity. So we have here some concepts that we have to match with the paragraphs in the text, okay? And the concepts are exercise, food, health, relaxation, sleep, time management. Which one goes with this? 
pay attention, read carefully, and do this activity. Now, to continue, we are going to focus on the very specific vocabulary of the unit that is related to health problems, okay? Now, if we take a look at this text, we can find very important words. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't, but they have things in common. For example, headaches. Do you know what is a headache? Look at this boy. Maybe he is suffering from a headache. We have another one here that is backache. Okay. And finally here we have stomachache. These three concepts explain uh, a problem that we may suffer. And they are formed in the same way. Adding the suffix aches at the end. Aches means dolor. So, headache means dolor de cabeza, backache means dolor de espalda, stomachache means dolor de estómago. Okay? Now, we are going to take a look at the specific vocabulary of the unit. So, we are going to move to page number 32. Here, we have some pictures, okay? And they are all showing like a pain or suffering. They are suffering from different things, different symptoms, okay? And what would we do is find what is the concept for each other, okay? What do they represent? Now, we are going to do it using this game, okay? So we have to move all the words to complete it. So we are going to start with this one, a toothache. Toothache means dolor de diente o muela. So we are going to put it here. Then we have next to it, we have the word backache. So this one goes there, backache, dolor de, de espalda. Then we have a boy there that he is suffering from a cough. Cough means tos. Then we have this girl and she has a fever. So we move the concept here. Then we have another boy. Look, he is blowing his nose. So maybe he has a cold. Then we have a girl, okay, that she's not feeling very well. She has a stomachache. Then look at this person, okay, grabbing his own head. He is suffering from a headache. Then, if you take a look at this boy, he has a sore throat. That means uh, dolor de garganta o garganta irritada. Look at this one. Look at his arm. It's all red. So maybe he has a rash. And finally, look at this person, okay, covering his ear. He has an earache. That means dolor de oído. Okay? So... They are okay. Now we are going to listen to the pronunciation of these words. A toothache. A, toothache. a, back a backache. A cough. A, cough. a, fever. a fever. A cold. A, cold. a, stomach. a stomach ache. A headache. A, a sore throat. A, a rash. An earache. Okay, very good. Now, we are going to do this activity that is number two. And here, we are going to listen to two short conversations. Okay, this is number one. And this is number two. And we are going to fill the gaps. Unit, Unit three. three. Vocabulary. Vocabulary. Illnesses. Illnesses. Page, Page 32. 32. Exercise 2. What's the matter? I don't feel well. I have an earache. Poor you. You should go to the doctor. What's wrong? I don't feel well. I have a bad rash. Oh no. You should use some cream. Okay, so could you complete it? Did you pay attention? Now I am going to show you what are the correct answers for this. Look at the first one says, what's the matter? I don't feel well. I have an earache. 
poor you, you should go to the doctor. Then in number two says, what's wrong? I don't feel well. I have a bad rash. Oh no, you should use some cream. Okay, so here we have the word should. Should means deberías. So it's like a recommendation we can give to somebody. Now we are going to move to our workbook. Okay, and we are going to use the words that we learned in this unit. So let's go here. Take a look. Look at number one. It says vocabulary illnesses. Complete the sentences with the, book, the words in the box. We have backache, cold, cough, earache, fever, headache, rash, sore throat, stomachache, and toothache. Now we are going to complete these sentences using these words, okay? So take your time, think where you can put these words, okay? And then we are going to check. Okay, could you solve this? Now we are going to check. So in number one says, try to avoid getting water in your ears when you have an earache. Number two, I ate too much. Now I have a stomach ache. Number three, I carried some heavy boxes yesterday and now I have a backache. Number four, my head hurts. I need to lie down somewhere quiet until my headache disappears. Number five. Sometimes we couldn't hear the movie. Someone behind us had an annoying cough. Number six. 39 degrees. You have a high fever. Number seven. I shouted too much at the concert. Now I have a sore throat. Number eight. KZ is going to go to the dentist because she has a toothache. And number nine, off, oh, I have an ugly red rash on my arm. Okay, now we are going back to the pages where we started. And we are going to move here. Okay, take a look. Here we have this concept should and shouldn't okay these two verbs maybe you learned it before and they mean debería debería no debería okay and we use it to give a piece of advice o sea lo utilizamos para dar un consejo o alguna recomendación look at the examples you should go to bed before midnight deberías irte a la cama antes de la medianoche You shouldn't use your cell phone. No deberías usar tu teléfono. Okay? These are pieces of the text we read before. And look at here. We have a chart. Okay? With the structure to use this verb. Should. This is very easy to use because we use it like this in the same form. Okay? For all the pronouns. Se usa exactamente igual para todos los pronombres. No se modifica. Y solamente cuando queremos negar, le agregamos NT al final, en la forma abreviada. And when we want to make a question using should, we write it like this. Should I go? Where should I go? Yes, you should. No, you shouldn't. Why should we go? Okay, so when we use it with a WH question word at the beginning, we put it next. Another important thing is when we use should, We add the verb in the normal state, okay? the base form. Utilizamos el verbo que sigue en su forma base, sin ninguna modificación. Look at this one. It says, read the sentences, then choose the correct alternative. You should eat healthily. Deberías comer saludablemente. You shouldn't walk all day. We should, we use should and shouldn't plus base form or ing of the main verb to give advice. ¿Cómo es la forma del verbo que sigue al should? 
la forma ING o la forma base. You decide. Ok. And now we are going to take a look at here. We have only five sentences and we have to complete should or shouldn't. And we are going to do it as a game. Look at this one. If we are going to move these words, okay, to use them here, look at the sentences, okay, understand the meaning of the sentence and then decide should or shouldn't. Look at this one. Tom's in the hospital. We visit him later. You drink so much soda, you'll get a toothache. Bella's leg hurts. She run. I'm too sick for soccer practice. I call the coach. You swim when you have an earache. Now we are going to decide what to use. Look at the first one. What do we use? Should or shouldn't? Okay, we are going to use should. Then we are going to use the negative form. In number three, we are going to use negative again. In number four, we are going to use this. And finally, we are going to use this at the end. Okay, let's check. Very good, all correct. Now, using this as an example, you are going to do this activity. Okay, activity number one. And then, we are going to move here and we are going to create an advice for somebody. Give the people advice. Use should or shouldn't and a suitable verb. This means in this exercise, we have a problem here. And here we give a recommendation. We need to use should or shouldn't and a verb. Like in here, we use go. For example, I have a terrible toothache. You should go to the dentist. Then, situation number one. I am really tired. You to bed early. Number two. I have a stomachache. You so much candy. Number three. I'm cold. You a sweater. Number four, I have a backache. You golf today. Relax. Okay, so these are the activities we are going to work and we are going to do this week. Okay, finally, we are going to do this one that is number three. It says write questions and short answers. Use should or shouldn't. Okay, here we have to write questions. Okay, so we take the ingredients and we make the question. Now, boys and girls, this is what we're going to do. It's a pretty easy start, okay, on this unit. Bye-bye.